Hey, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We will not be offended. <laughs> um, but we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch our live shows and to watch our recordings. Um, we have our recordings all posted on our website. We do the show live on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We have, um, we're in our, almost to the end of our fifth year of doing Encompass Live, and recordings of all of our shows are available on our website. So you can always go back there and watch them and listen to them there, along with any presentations that people have shared with us that they've used or any websites that they have shared in their show and their presentations. We have all of that linked from the archives pages as well. Uh, we do all sorts of things here, uh, presentations, interviews, any training sessions, demos, uh, book reviews, basically anything related to libraries we are happy to have and want to have on our show to share with everyone. Um, we have guest speakers that come in sometimes, and we have the Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations, and that's what we have today. Um, sitting here with me, you can't see them because we don't have the camera set up for that at the moment. We have other purposes for that. Um, thank you. We have uh, Dave and Scott, both from the Talking Book and Braille service here at the Library Commission, which is actually a national service. There's these, these Talking Book and Braille services all over the country. Um, but they're going to talk about some new things coming um, from Talking Book and Braille. So I will just hand over to you guys to uh, introduce yourself more fully and um, take it away. Thank you, Krista. You want to... Well, we want to use our time this morning as an update for Talking Book and Braille service to show you what's new especially look at online resources. We've added some new pages to, um, to our home page and uh, show you what's there and also we want to spend some time on BARD and with the BARD app so you can see what that's about. First of all, what you're seeing is our um, Nebraska Library Commission home page and Talking Book and Braille Service has a fly off that says press and on that press page we've added a couple of PSAs and two YouTube videos. Now, PSA 1 is a public service announcement that came to us on audio cassette a number of years ago. And we were able to digitize it and, and make it crisp again. And it's still apropos, so we've offered that, encouraged radio stations to play that here in Nebraska. PSA 2 is one that we um, use a script from National Library Service, but we recorded it. And uh, we also think that's going to be appropriate for promoting talking books. So, can we hear the PSA one to begin with? Yes, let's start with PSA one. When I started losing my vision, one of the greatest losses to me was the ability to, to pick up and read a book. So I took advantage of the Talking Book program. It fills a need for information and recreation when you can no longer read a regular book. Call the Nebraska Library Commission Talking Book and Braille Service at 1-800-742-7691. And PSA 2 is the one that we recorded in our studios using um, Live of Congress script. Reading is something you can enjoy no matter where you are. Even if you can't hold a book, turn a page, or read regular print. Because just for you, there are Talking Books, a national service of the Library of Congress. High quality recordings of bestsellers classics, even the latest magazines. And you can get talking books and playback equipment by mail at no charge if you're eligible. For information, call the Nebraska Library Commission Talking Book and Braille Service, 1-800-742-7691. We, we have an e email um, service. We sent out the PSA link to Nebraska's uh, stations asking them to please consider playing these. We have a personal contact with one of the the, um, the uh, corporations that owns a number of stations in, in Nebraska, and they're going to. We have more prospects of having it played there. We don't have any feedback yet about how well they're being received, mm -hmm. but I hope that they'll get some airtime. PSAs mm -hmm. are are competitive, and, and a lot of nonprofits are trying to use them now, so it's hard it's hard to judge that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we ended up opting to do 30-second spots, too, rather than 60-second spots in the hopes that they'll be more likely to be played, too. Um, just because I know a lot of the programmers at different radio stations want to try to get as much content like that into a program as possible, so if we have something relatively short, they're more likely to add it into a show. Um, 
So I think, you know, so far so good. We've had um, some of the local stations, um, uh, like uh, KZUM here in town, um, has them in their playlist already. We're still working on some of the more commercial type stations. But, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress, and they're relatively quick and easy to make, so it's a, a good promotional tool to, uh, to continue to work on and develop. We, we plan to work on a couple more PSAs early next year that will deal with some of the new um, evolving technologies involved with talking books. Um, one will probably focus more on, on the BARD website that we'll be demonstrating shortly and the, you know, the possibility of downloading books, and then one will probably deal more specifically with mobile devices, the, the uh, iPhone and iPad app, and eventually the Droid app that will be coming out. Yeah, that's right. We, we could have done a 15-second PSA, which is the other category, but we, 30, 30 seconds was the kind of compromise between not going too long and... And, and just reading our phone questions. number. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. It, it was really tight. Exactly. Well, we have two YouTube videos. One, the, the first one, the lower part of the screen was designed as an outreach to uh, students and to uh, and, and, and to schools. And that was done by staff. We did have a commercial uh, camera operator, a videographer work with us. So let, let's play that one, Scott. Yes. And I'll mention again to you, if you want to see these, I know in case it's difficult to hear the audio as you're watching the mm -hmm. webinar, if you just go to nlc.nebraska.gov slash tbbs slash press.aspx, you can access all these materials directly. Mm -hmm. um, and I would recommend with these videos, if you watch them, go ahead and click on the, on the YouTube link on each one so that you can watch it larger as well. Yeah, and are just, it's a fly out from Talking Books and Braille services. A fly -out. That's right, yes, over on the left here on the main screen, if you go to Talking Books and Braille, um, press will be one of your options. And after the show is over and the recordings, we'll have all of these links also Perfect. included in our show notes in the Commission's Delicious account. Oh, yes, so I'll we'll have links to those as well. Awesome. So if you can't catch the whole URL there, we'll have them um, available to you afterwards, and everyone will get sent, sent that info. Great. Well, I will go ahead and open this in full screen, and this is the first PSA. We finished this one right at the end of February this year. <laughs> It used to be, if you had trouble reading, you might have to listen to the cassette player like this. Talking Book and Braille Service has digital books and magazines that you can listen to on digital players. Both the books and the players are loaned to qualifying individuals at no cost to the person or school. There are fiction and nonfiction books for fun reading class, English class, school papers, and partners. The digital player is about the size of an iPad. Choose who you'd like to read from online catalogs or bar. You can download them yourself or send in a request. Readers Advisors can help you search for your favorite author, title, or subject and answer questions. To register for free talking books, fill out the application form. You are eligible if it's hard to use regular print because of a visual or physical impairment or a reading disability. Have it signed by a resource teacher, media specialist, nurse, or doctor. For a reading disability, a medical doctor's signature is required. Schools can receive books and players too. A staff member completes a facility application form and lists who will be using the service. Talking Book and Braille Service. Check it out! Chapter 1. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world have a Okay, that was filmed in a high school media center here in Lincoln. Now the other one that you're going to see is targeting uh, se seniors, uh, and that is senior citizens, many of whom might live in a retirement center or a care facility. 
but we chose not to film it in a facility. Instead, we chose to film it in someone's house. And in fact, it was Scott's house. <laughs> it's actually my house. Yeah. His house, but it, it has a nice warm woodwork, very homey looking. And we thought it would feel that way. But uh, And the model is someone that we met at a CE event. He is a presenter. And he provided service free, and but the videographer was for a very modest fee. Yes. So, um, and as it turns out, um, the C presenter is actually a, a patron of our service as well. So, and he discloses that. So, yes, yeah, he does. Um, and the oh, this was finished. The final edit was done yesterday. I mean, yesterday. So this is brand new. So, yes. Nice. So it was a long time in coming. It yep. A lot of work on these. So let's go look. Uh, let's go ahead and play that one. Yeah, that first one was called Talking Books Here Now, and this one is called Talking Books Relax and Enjoy. And again, you'll kind of see we tried to create kind of a relaxing atmosphere and show how um, using the service is, is both easy and it's a very enjoyable thing to do, low stress, the new players are very simple to use compared to the cassette, etc. So here it is. Hi, my name is David, and I use the Talking Book and Braille service. It's a free library available to Nebraskans who can't use regular print because of a physical or visual impairment. So, come on inside and tell you all about it. The Talking Book and Braille service offers audio books and magazines. The books are lightweight. You put them home in your hand. Western. Mysteries, romance, classics, inspiration, and more. Find just the books you will enjoy. Here's how the system works. You let them know what books and magazines you would like. The books and magazines are listed online and in large print catalogs that are mailed to you. You can call your readers or buy They can help you search by author, title, or subject. You can also mail in your requests, send an email, or submit book and magazine requests using the online catalogs. If you prefer, you can also download books. The books and magazines are checked out and go back and forth in the menu. The first page has already been made. The player makes a listing of books you read. Push the power button. Slip in the book, and you are set. The sound is clear, even with the volume up top. When you're finished with the book, pull it out using the finger roll. You can set up in your own name, and the retirement center or care facility can be set up as well. To register for this free service, fill out the application and mail it in. Chapter 1. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you have. Okay, Scott, let's show us about Bard. Yeah, well, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into Bard. So we discussed it a little bit, probably a little bit more in that first video than the second because we were aiming that one at younger students, and of course there's a lot of competition out there for how to get audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the patrons that we look for with younger audiences tend to also have um, organic dysfunction disorders, uh, dyslexia, and related um, situations in which they're basically dealing with a print disability where they want something that's, that's cool. You know, they don't want to be carrying around this big clunky cassette player, kind of like the setup in that video had. Mm -hmm. And so with, with Bard, I think it's one of those situations where um, it, it's a little bit more of a mainstream sort of feel where you can you know, go to a website, find what you want, you know, take some control of, of your own uh, books without having to wait around for the mail to show up. And so to use BARD, you have to already be a patron of our service. You have to fill out those application forms like you saw in the video and be signed up conventionally first. 
And at that point, you can also sign up for BARD, in which you'll be given a login and password. Um, you need to already have your own email and have some familiarity with how to use computers and download files, um, copy them onto flash drives and that sort of thing so that you can use them either with the player or as we'll see in, in a bit with the app as well. And so once you have a login, I'll go ahead and log myself in here. Oh, hey, it even knows who I am. Let's go ahead and click on that. There we go. Um, so this is the login page. Um, let's see, I don't really want to remember my password, so let's do this. Um, and from this, this main BARD page, first of all, you'll notice in the upper left corner, uh, there's the great seal of the state of Nebraska. There's some IP recognition that goes on with BARD so that if you get to this website, for example, from Google by typing in NLS BARD, um, it will recognize the IP of the computer that's logging in and take you to the appropriate seal for the, the state or the regional library that is closest to your IP. So in this case, we're in Nebraska, so the great seal of Nebraska shows up there. And to use BARD, um, there's a couple ways to do it. Some folks like to browse to find new materials, and some people are searching for very specific things. If you're into browsing, right at the top here, you'll see two links, recently added books and magazines, and most popular books. Why don't we go ahead and go into recently added books and magazines. And uh, at this point, looks like there's 977 items in here. And uh, there's also 123 Braille items we can go to. These, these would be web Braille, and you would download them and use them with a refreshable Braille display. And um, basically, you can go in here, and from November 19th, they uploaded quite a few things just yesterday. So here's the newest uh, edition of The Nation, um, Reader's Digest in German, Sports Illustrated, People Magazine. Um, and here's a book. Each of the books will have a small annotation and tell you about the, the reading time for the book, general subject issues. And uh, to download these, it's really simple. All you do is pick something that you want. I'll go back to a magazine because these are a little smaller here. And you just click on it. And it'll ask you if you want to open it or save it. You'll want to save it. And you just click OK and it downloads. Um, I didn't bring a player up here today because we're going to be demonstrating the app in more detail. But to use these once you've downloaded them, what you would do is unzip the file and copy it and paste it onto a flash drive or a blank cartridge that fits into the NLS player. You can put multiple books and magazines on one cartridge or flash drive, and then you just pop them into your machine and play them. Um, but in this case, let's go ahead and go back and look at the find books function. Um, in this case, you can search the collection by just putting any, any keyword you like in this first search the collection box. Um, you can also search by author, name, title, or subject. These bring up drop-down menus. Um, I personally don't find these as useful simply because there are a lot of books on BARD at this point. So, like, for instance, if you go into H's or author's last name, you'll get a pretty significant number of pages. So, yeah, we have 3,160 hits for authors whose last name begins with H. So this almost becomes kind of a browsing situation on its own here just because of the, the volume of, of uh, authors that are involved. Um, there is a foreign language collection that you can access, and then a music collection as well. These materials are handled at the Library of Congress National Library Services office. Um, they do have some things that they send out by mail as well in terms of music, and they're generally instructional materials as opposed to things to listen to, um, like how to play guitar, how to play accordion, um, sheet music for various different things, that sort of thing. Um, and again, magazines are listed alphabetically by title, or if there's a particular magazine you're looking for, there's a nice drop-down menu that you can go to and look at all the back issues that they have too. Bard's been around for a couple years now, and there are quite a few things on here. So, for example, uh, let's go to National Geographic. Um, if we go ahead and go into National Geographic, you'll see that we have um, 12 issues that are currently available. Um, they're up to date with the November issue already. And you can go back all the way to, looks like, December of last year. And then there are even older issues if you're looking for a back issue. Um, you can go back a little further, 74, so this will probably take you back um, several years. Um, so there's a lot of material. If there was a particular article you were looking for that someone told you about, you could go back and find that magazine. Um, how far back you can go depends on the publication. Um, some magazines were prepared and put onto BARD before others, and so back issues for some go back several years, and some may go back even four or five or six years. Um, but let's go back to the main page here. Um, there is a list of, you can do a wish list, and 
let me go ahead and click on that right now. If you happen to be at your desktop computer and you're interested in some books that you might want to listen to later, this wish list works very nicely with the new Bard app for the iPhone and iPad. Um, if you see things in a wish list that you want to add, um, I've added a couple things here just so that you can see them. As you're browsing, you can add things to your wish list, and that facilitates downloading them more easily with the app. So in this case, um, I added this uh, story of the Dust Bowl to my wish list so that we can look at it later here. But let's go back to here on the main page. And again, if you want to search for author title or subject in a specific way, you can just put the author directly in here. Um, do you guys have a particular author you want to look at today? Uh, okay, let's see. Looks like Dave has a list or two. Um, yeah, let's do Best Fear Aldrich. Yeah. Just a good Nebraska author. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and put in Aldrich and... Okay, so there's 12, 12 books by just searching on the word Aldrich. Um, one in the title, eight in the author, three in the annotation. So starting with the title, looks like that one was not what we wanted, there's but best. here's a bunch that we want. Um, okay. A Lantern in Her Hand, probably the most uh, famous classic by Best Reader Aldrich. A White Bird Flying, Journey into Christmas, Miss Bishop, Song of Years, mm -hmm. Spring Came On Forever, and The Lieutenant's Lady. So there's actually quite a few. I think those are all the, the big best reader all the tips, really. Yeah. And I think you're going to find many of those are available on Bard and Digital, but they're on Cassette in other places. And Cassette is fading away so quickly. Yeah, we should mention Cassette is rather it's dramatically just faded about away. Gone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they started phasing the net out years ago, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's been an ongoing yeah, process. That's the guiding it now. So uh -huh. That's right. Yeah, with, with um, the digital books have been out for, what, a little over three years now? Come four, on. Yeah. yeah, coming up on four. And uh, in the meantime, they, they continued to make cassettes for about a year, overlap mm -hmm. in the middle, and then discontinued new cassettes and focused everything on digital. Uh, at the same time, NLS was already having their contractors produce the books in a digital ready format even before the mm -hmm. books were actually available to the public digitally. So they've had archives that went back probably roughly preparing. a decade. Yeah, they've been preparing this for a while exactly, yeah, behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, and in terms of book numbers, um, these book numbers may not mean much to some folks out there. Um, typically, these are chronological. NLS issues a five-digit book number as the book is in production. And so, for example, a lantern in her hand here, 24820, that's a pretty old book. That number dates back to the early to mid-80s, I think. So um, in cases like this, what has happened is NLS kept really nice archives of their tapes as they were being recorded. So they have reel-to-reel -reel masters of a lot of these books and they converted them to digital as well. Um, some of them sound better than others, but most of them actually sound surprisingly good. They did a great job of, of maintaining those materials so that they could be transferred into different formats in the future. And so we have some contemporary books. All the new books were basically born digital, as it were, in the last decade or so. Even though we were circulating them on cassette for a good chunk of that time, they were being Mass produced. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So those books all sound pristine. And most of these older books, again, sound pretty good, too. Like, here with the white bird flying, 435 numbers are early 90s. Um, and those are really nice recordings too. But it's pretty impressive. They have books dating all the way back into the 70s that they've been able to convert to the new digital format. So. Nice. And bringing the cassette books into digital is an on ongoing process. Yes. It's going to be ongoing for quite a while. Yep. So I guess those are the main things about how BARD works from a functional perspective. And again, um, as a setup to talking about this app, you need to have some familiarity with, with BARD and using computers in general to take that next step to using the app. Um, theoretically, I suppose you could do most of your work with the app, but um, again, it's one of those issues where there's, there's a certain um, presumption that you've already had a lot of training with computers and using digital objects before you would jump to using the app, um, simply because um, we definitely like to help people out if they're having some issues with downloading, but past a certain point, um, we're not really in a position to train someone how to use an iPhone or an iPad um, from a foundational perspective. We can help them with a, a few little tips and tricks, but um, the actual functionality of the, of the device is something they should already have some familiarity with before they would want to uh, go ahead and download it and use it. Um, and the same applies for BAR, too. Um, we definitely will help people out if they're having certain problems with their computer. 
Um, but there's only so much we can do over the phone in terms of tech support if we can't find the files on our computer. Um, we'll help them out as much as we can, but sometimes it's a situation of suggesting that a computer class might be in order or something of that nature. Um, so the app itself, um, here's a page on the iTunes website, uh, the preview page kind of showing the app. Um, Theoretically, anyone could download this app because the iTunes Store is available to anyone. It is a free app. Anyone, anyone could download it, but of course you have to be a patron of the National Library Services services before you could actually use the app. So it'd be pointless. Exactly. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to log in because that login and password would be issued to you through Bard, and you need that login and password to initialize this app. Um, right now, the app is only available for iOS devices, um, the iPhone, the iPad, and the um, iPod Touch um, can all use the app. Um, they are working on a Droid version of the app, and there's been some delay. They had to start over with the design of it. Apparently, it's considerably different in terms of architecture when, when you're coding it. And so the latest that we've heard is they're hoping to have it out sometime maybe middle to late 2014. So it's going to be a while, but there will be a, a Droid version eventually as well. Um, and the look and feel of this app, we've been amazingly pleased with it. It's it's really quite cool. Um, let's look at these screenshots for just a moment, too. We'll actually look at the the uh, device in action here in a second. But um, you probably saw the, the close-up in one of those videos of our player, and you'll notice that this uh, this first screen cap that's roughly in the center of your screen looks very much like the, the physical player that we send out to people as well. Um, so there's a certain look and feel that's automatically built into these that it's very easy to make the adjustment from using the physical machine to the app. Um, and again, it's, you, would, you would need to have an iTunes account already in order to download it and your own iOS device to use. Uh, we do warn people to, in terms of downloading, um, you may want to use Wi-Fi rather than, um, say, your, your phone service for downloading in terms of bandwidth, because if you were to download a whole bunch of books, you, know, you might end up having to pay extra for your bandwidth. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind um, as a user of the device. Um, currently there are 45 ratings. It looks like it's got four and a half stars out of five. Here's some customer reviews from iTunes. The app is everything it was promised to be. The sound quality is excellent. The controls are identical to the physical machine. Uh, the bar app has vastly exceeded my expectations. Um, so far it's really been quite well received. Uh, I know Dave just demonstrated it a little bit at the uh, NFB State Convention. Did you want to mention a little bit about that? Yeah, um, the app had been out <laughs> maybe two, three weeks, and I was um, scheduled to make a presentation to the National Federation of the Blind at the State Convention in North Platte, and that was fine, and they wanted me to come a day early because there's an, an exhibitor's hall, and they would provide a table at no cost if I would just be there to respond to questions and meet people. So I, I went a day early. I brought along the digital player, and I brought along the iPad that was loaded with the app and ready to go for, for, for demo. Um, there wasn't a, a, a lot of traffic because there were programs in session, but I had a sample. and I talked to um, some of the blind consumers who were um, career age and maybe somewhat older, and they were pleased to know about the app. They really wanted to uh, ask questions about the digital player. They weren't into iOS themselves personally. I talked to some college age um, consumers. They love the app, and some of them knew about it. Some of them, several of them had it already. One young lady um, is an avid iOS user, but doesn't didn't have the app and didn't know about it. But I watched her, and she was able to use the voiceover commands, which is a built-in accessibility feature for for blind people, and she had no problem um, making it work for her. One, one young guy was a lot of fun. He said, I really want this app, but I'm loyal to my Android. I'm going to hold out for that. And, <laughs> and I told him, okay, it'll be, you know, I hope within um, eight months or so, I hope, hope you get it. He was very good-natured about it. But, but there, there is a feeling about my Android is important, my iOS is important. But this is a generation that grew up with these things. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I guess part of the delay has to do with the way that the voiceover feature works in iOS. It's really built into the system from the ground up whereas the way that it works on Droid devices is a little bit different. And so architecturally, they were having some problems making sure that the, the device would be fully accessible. 
and they don't really want to release anything until it is 100% fully accessible. So and they gave us he heads up and said this is a more difficult piece of engineering, so yes, mm -hmm. it'll be a bit longer. Yeah, and it, it, it's going to come. So. But I agree too. I've used um, an iPhone for several years and an iPad for about a year, and gosh, they really did a great job designing the app so that it's quite intuitive for people who are already used to using iOS apps. Uh, one of the things about designing things like this is you could take a lot of different approaches, but you want to find something that's a healthy balance between duplicating the functionality of our physical machines and behaving in a way that's fairly predictable for someone who's already used a lot of different types of apps um, so that the learning curve isn't steep at all. And really, it is quite plug and play. If you've already used an iOS device, um, well, as you'll see here in a moment with this demonstration, it's really quite easy to explain and to use. Um, and it doesn't really take very long at all to, to get fully functional with the app. Well, I guess maybe it's time to go yeah, ahead and okay. start the demonstration here, yeah, too. Let's do that. Yeah, let's yeah. yeah. we'll switch over I'll get the, I'm going to get the iPad turned on here and wake it up. There you go. Okay. Yeah, switch to right. sharing. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to switch to... There you go. You're all good to go. Okay, is this all on the screen? Perfect. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and keep the camera faced here. But the, uh, the app itself, um, you do have to log in the very first time that you use the app. After you've done that, you stay logged in as you open it subsequent times. Of course, if you make a password change or something like that on BARD, you will have to log in again at that point. But really, there's just the one time. So it's, it's really quite easy to do. Um, from there, there are four buttons at the bottom of the screen. Bookshelf, Get Books, Settings, and Now Reading. Uh, let's start with the now reading just for fun because that's the screen that looks very much like our physical player. Um, it really does work very much like the physical player. Two. I'll just jump back to the beginning of the book here. Six, seven, oh. Your mother was a Neanderthal. The time warp trio. All right. So from here, the button functionality is basically play and stop is the green button in the center. I'll go ahead and hit that and we'll listen for just a second here. By John Sheska, illustrated by Lane Smith. Text copyright John Sheska, 1993. All rights reserved. Read by Ray Hagen. This book was originally created for audio cassette playback. Any announcements concerning cassettes do not apply to this recording. This version contains markers allowing direct access to major portions of the book. Library of Congress annotation. Sam, Joe, and Fred. The time. Okay, we don't need to listen to a whole book right now, but you can rewind and fast forward in small increments with the rewind button to the left of play stop and fast forward button to the right of play stop. You can skip over the large portions with the buttons just above that. Um, this is like a, basically, depending on what you've selected in the center button, right now we're on front matter. Jump, phrase. We can choose phrase jump. Jump, bookmark. Uh, the bookmark jump, there's a bookmark button up here that says mark, where you can see that on your screen. And you can add your own bookmarks, like let's say you're reading a book along with the book club, you can marks and pertinent sections that you want to return to to analyze the book and you can skip back and forth using that bookmark selection. Jump. Front matter. So at this point we can skip one to chapter one just by uh, skipping to chapters. Two. Uh, that'll be chapter two there, etc. So um, another really cool thing I think with the, with the iPad and iPhone is there is an, a new way that you can access different sections of the book by jumping into uh, this main navigation. Navigation up menu. Um, this is something you can't do with the physical player, but um, the physical player is basically a linear device. You're, you're skipping back and forth, left and right, um, through the audio. In this case, you can actually jump ahead um, by selecting the different chapter markers that are already in the book. These will be situational, and it will depend on the way that the book is marked up. Uh, fiction books typically don't have nearly as many marks as a nonfiction book. The nonfiction books might actually have many layers that are nested in here. Like, let's say it's a cookbook. You may have main sections, like your your soups and your breads and so forth, and then individual recipes within that, and then ingredient lists within that. And you can find all those things in these navigation windows and just go directly to them, which I think is kind of neat. Um, and again, something you can't do with the physical player, so this actually might be an even, even better way to use the books in some circumstances. Um, for pleasure reading, of course, if you are just reading a fiction book, you probably don't want to jump ahead that much, so it's maybe not as useful in some cases. But depending on your reading habits, magazines, again, I think are an area where you might want to skip. For example, we recorded Nebraska Farmer here, 
And if you are someone who is more of a rancher than, than a farmer, you may want to skip over the, the sections about growing corn and go straight to beef producer, which is something you can do. So it's, it's kind of neat how those work. Um, but let's go ahead and go to the bookshelf section. In the bookshelf, you're going to find things that you've already downloaded to your mobile device. We have audio books, audio magazines, and then braille books and magazines. Uh, there's a help file as well. That help file actually takes you to the internet and it's a PDF file that NLS can update as time goes on. So if they make some feature changes or, or uh, fix bugs or that sort of thing, that file will be continually updated. So the help will always be current. Um, in the case of audio books, I don't have any braille devices on here because we don't have a refreshable braille display for uh, demonstration purposes. But if I click on audio books, on this particular device, we've downloaded three books at the moment. Uh, we have a Louis L'Amour book, Down the Long Hills, Kitty in the Summer by Judy Belton, and that uh, John Triska book that we just had up. Um, the other cool thing is the device will remember where you were in each book. So if you're kind of grazing a book and a magazine at the same time and you switch back and forth between them, the device will remember where you last were in that material and take you back to the same spot when you bring it back up. Um, so if we go into Louis L'Amour, looks like I was pretty close to the beginning of it in chapter two, the last time this was up, but if I hit play, it'll jump right in where it was. West. Yeah, you the, 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 the Shalako. Says, not the page. Mm -hmm. Silver Canyon. Sitka. The strong shall live. Yeah, looks like it's reading a bit of a bibliography at that point of Mr. Lamour. But if we go back to bookshelf, uh, let's go back to magazines. Uh, here we have a September issue of Diabetes Forecast and a September People magazine. And again, it will just remember where you were in these. Let me show that navigation section navigation in here again. Menu. Um, this navigation menu even has the tags for the names of things. So if you're really worried about, um, can Bethany bounce back? We'll can just... Bethany bounce back? With a new talk show and a fresh start, the reality star opens up about men, marriage, and life as a single mom. There you go. So you can kind of jump around that Navigation way. Navigation menu. Um, let's go ahead and go back to the uh, second selection at the bottom here, which is Get Books. This basically takes you to a mobile version of the BARD website. Um, if we want to go to those recently added titles, uh, this is very similar to the screen we just saw using a desktop computer, except that now we're reliant on the Wi-Fi in this room, so it's taking a moment to grab it. So, it's um, looking. Yes. It is looking, yeah. Yeah, this isn't so much a function of the app being slow, it's a function of, of the Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi, yeah. Exactly. Um, while that's loading, too, I can show you, since we have a camera here, I brought my phone up here as well just to kind of show you um, how it looks on a uh, phone. I'll just hold this here. Um, very similar, um, just a little bit smaller. So as you can see, it works just fine. Just to the beginning of the book. Glossary Pronunciation Guide. Doshiki, a brightly colored, loose-fitting garment. Yeah, so that's basically what it looks like on that. I've actually put a cassette piece on my iPhone. <laughs> um, just in, uh, You're a retro guy. Just, well, just to remember where we came from, right? Yes, that's, yeah. uh, we use tapes for an awfully long time. Well, it's sure it's taking a while to get to that. You know what? Maybe I'll use my phone for a moment while that's working, because I can actually... I'll just use my uh, Wi-Fi, or use the phone network here. Uh, if yeah, I go to get books, yeah, yeah, I think I, I no Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. While the Wi-Fi, we'll we'll race the Wi-Fi here. It looks like I'm already on the basic section here. Um, if we go to recently added books, Josh, slow down. Oh, here we go. There it is. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So this is very similar to what we saw on the other um, on the desktop computer. To see the annotations, though, you have to click on the little blue buttons over here, and these will take you into the more detailed annotations. If you like what you see in the annotation, you simply hit download and it will download it to your device and open it. It'll, it'll beep once the download is completed and then you can jump right into it and it will show up in the, the list of bookshelf things that have been downloaded, just like so. Um, there's a settings page. Well, let's see. We'll go back to the iPad because it's a little larger here. Um, on the settings page, uh, you can change the overall speed and tone of reading. Um, the verbosity makes reference to how much the the app will tell you about what page that you're on, you can reduce the verbosity somewhat if, if you've been using the app for a while and you know where you're at. It also announces what command you're, you're touching. That's right. The control button. Yep. Um, for people who have some 
vision, there's some different changes you can make in terms of contrast and font sizes um, if you want to use it as a, a visual device. And then your overall account settings, you can go into your BARD account from here and make changes as well. Um, and then again, I was kind of hoping that would work, but uh, yeah, it looks like it's basically Wi-Fi is moving slow. Um, Do you have anything you wanted to add at that point, Dave? I think that's basically the overall functionality of the device. Um, we can talk a little bit about voiceover next, I suppose. Yeah, we could do that, and it, 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 it might might respond. Yeah, yeah it's still working. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and jump into voiceover for a moment. Um, again, some folks who have some usable vision or are using our services um, with a condition such as dyslexia may use the device very much as we've just demonstrated. Others will be using the voiceover feature that's built into iOS devices. And to access that, I'm going to get on the iPad and go into the settings. Um, this is something that if you were using the device with voiceover all the time, you would just leave it on. Um, you can go into accessibility, and the first selection here will be voiceover. If I turn this on, I'll set it up, I guess, for a moment because voiceover will start speaking a lot, so it's kind of difficult to demonstrate in the sense that it's it's going to say a lot of things, basically. But let's go ahead and turn it on now, and you can hear what it does when you do that. Well, there it is. Okay. VoiceOver on. Okay, so with VoiceOver on, Settings. it changes the functionality of the devices a little bit. If you're used to using iOS devices and, for instance, uh, scrolling through pages, simply by swiping to the left and right, um, it works slightly differently. And there is a voiceover practice section that you can go to where it will describe what you're doing. Let's go ahead and click Voiceover practice button. So for instance, normally to open an app, you just press the app once and it opens. In this case, a single press will highlight something and then you double tap to actually open it. So let's double tap on voiceover practice. Voiceover practice heading. Yes, yeah, you have to go very quickly. Um, so if, if you're learning this for the first time or you're helping someone out with an iOS device using VoiceOver, VoiceOver practice is a great place to go just to try things. Um, it'll tell you what happens with each type of uh, finger gesture that you're making. Practice VoiceOver gestures, commands, and typing in this area. Select the Done button in the top right corner and double tap to exit. So, for example, with VoiceOver turned on, to go from page to page on the front thing, you use a three-finger swipe like so. Three-finger three single tap. Speed page number or rows being displayed. Three finger flick left. Scroll right one page. So there's a little description. Um, it'll tell you both visually as well as in audio what each flip finger left. gesture does. Move to previous item. Double tap. Activates the selected item. Like so. So this is something that you can play with again to kind of get familiar with it. You can turn it on and use the device for a while and then just go and turn it off again too. It doesn't take terribly long to get used to. I've turned it on periodically, kind of testing these apps. Um, it feels weird for the first five or ten minutes, but you get used to it very quickly. And again, if it's something you do all the time, it just becomes completely second nature and quite intuitive. Um, so to get out of these screens, done. you Button. select done and then double tap it. And then we'll go Set to voiceover. On. And you just double tap to turn voiceover off. So that's basically how it works. Um, you can also change the speaking rate in here, things like that. Um, yeah, I was going to ask about that. She's talking very, very fast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which I know a lot of people with visual, they, they get, they're very used to yeah, that. And the speed they, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, these kinds of descriptions, yeah, the faster they can get through them and still yeah. discern the text it typically is better just because those, you know, voiceover works very, very well, but the voice itself is kind of annoying, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. It's always there. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's basically how the app itself works. Um, did we have any questions or anything? We did have um, a few other resources we could talk about as um, well. If anybody does have any questions or you want to see anything in specific, specifically demoed, um, let us know. Use the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface to type in any questions, comments, or anything you have, and we'll, um, we can do that. Nothing has come in while you were doing it, though. No, okay. everyone's just watching. It <laughs> goes back to the home page. And yes. To the fly out for catalogs. We'll show you some other online catalogs. There you go. Yep. Just out of the way. Mm -hmm. Cool. You can go ahead and make that. Yeah. 
Thank you much. All right. Yeah, let's go back to our our uh, web page. Um, so here's the main Nebraska Library Commission web page. That's right. On the left column at the bottom, you'll see Talking Books in Braille. And if you hover over that with your mouse, you'll yeah. see a bunch of flyout menus. And let's try catalogs. That would be for a few minutes to go there. Okay. So under Collections, I'm going down to Catalogs. And the first one would be, um, well, let's do our own OPAC. We, uh, we, our, our computer team worked with reader advisor staff, and we created an OPAC um, that would show not just the UD catalog, but the materials that we actually have in our collection. So that it might be in, in this online ordering through the OPAC that way. Yeah, this has been a really cool thing that happened in the last year, really. We're very, very excited about this, because the, the circulation software that we use is called Reads. Uh, we get it free from the Library of Congress, and it works very well, but one thing that it lacks is, is an integrated OPAC. And so this has just been really phenomenal to, to have our own OPAC mixed in. So that you can choose all fields, author, title, and let me see. I think I chose a couple of authors to, to try. Um, um, oh, yes. Yeah, what was the, um, let's go with Joanne Fluke, F-L-U-K-E, and then Joanne is J-O-A-N-N-E. She writes these uh, mysteries full of recipes, and uh, we and un under format we can limit format. Let's try um, just digital because we're pushing digital and we don't offer the cassettes as we used to. And twenty five displays ought to be enough. But what do you think? Let's try. Let's see what that does. Yeah, let's see what we try. There they are. And if you click on each one, they'll tell you the annotation. Yes. Murders and muffins. Sure, I see. What a scrumptious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and um, it's DB five five two one three. It's it's uh, popular because probably have only one or so copies in there out right now. But if you back up, if if you check the box, there's a box. Uh, no, there isn't. Yes, there is. Yeah, there should be a box beside. I don't know if maybe it's the screen. Okay. Resolution here. If you do that, then you come down and choose Request Selected Items, and it leads you to the. Um, yes, at the bottom. You can check all of them or any of them. Oh yeah, the bottom. box. The display is happening kind of strangely. The box, I believe, is right there. It is. It just yeah. didn't show up as well. Yeah, we've kind of crunched the screen uh, for the webinar in your way. I believe it's, it's there. Yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and click on that one and click on, on the website. Web, that that one sounds delicious. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to know who you are, a bit you borrow, that is, it would be the name, what a city, phone number, and a note would be something like, I, I need this for a, a local book discussion group, send it right away so we would expedite it, or else it would become a request and not something that would expedite it. Yes. Or you could just tell us that you like us if you're so motivated. <laughs> yeah, I like Anything you want to say. Yep. Yeah. I need the recipe, maybe that's it. Yeah, so there's that one. Yes, if you do end up having you know problems with the site, you have the phone numbers listed there as well. A couple of links to send email to your reader advisor. That was one, and one was on the beginning of that. Yes, right for, toward the there it is toward, yes. toward the bottom of that opening page. That's right. Oh, you know we should mention magazines here too. That we added a section to make it really easy to get magazines. Um, if you subscribe to a magazine, it'll be very much like a print subscription. They'll be sent to you on a regular basis as they become available. Um, we mentioned how many issues per year occur that way too, and it's really easy to do these. You just click on the one that you want, and you'll get signed up for it. So you can go in and read about it, decide if you like it, and then at the bottom of this page, there'll be another, we'll skip down. We have a lot of magazines. Um, you can wire email, phone number. So you put in your info here and click on send order, and you'll be automatically signed up to receive those. Straight to your reader's advisor. Yeah, these work out very well. A lot of these are recorded in our own studios. We do have a few things, for example, like this last entry here, Your Dog, is recorded at the Massachusetts Regional Library. And those are things that they send us and we put onto digital cartridges here to send out to you. About, about half maybe our, our studio products, maybe half are brought in. Yeah, I think that's about right. That's about as close to it. Yeah. Now, the, the, the magazine catalog is also has an audio file that's online. So you can click mm -hmm. that and, and have it to speak to it. Right. Jackie, it's your voice, Scott. It, it is. I think I recorded the, the most recent update of that. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's see. So we have the OPAC. Yeah, we can go down there. Talk, talking about topics is, you can download it there. Click on Talking About Topics. That's a very popular periodic of the Library of Congress. It comes out six times a year. It lists the brand new talking books 
And when we get that, we know it because the order forms come in and the phone calls come in. But it's HTML or plain text. The reason they do plain text is it's got some screen readers have the plain text better than HTML. That's right. Yeah, so you can, it's broken down already for you if you're looking for children's books, you can jump directly to those, um, as well as uh, foreign language books, primarily in Spanish. Primarily in Spanish. And then fiction and nonfiction tend to be the, obviously, biggest divides that our patrons um, tend to focus mm -hmm. in one area more than another. So those that's the initial division, and it takes you right into the newest books here. All we need is it's DB71772. That's all we need to know. Yeah, so that's a very easy way for people to compile a list of books that they're interested in getting in the future. Some people send us very long lists, and the way we handle that is, um, say they get five books at a time or ten books at a time, typically depending on you know whatever their preference settings are. Um, as they return books to us in the mail, the next day a mail card is generated for more books that are on their list, and we just continue to go through their list until it's exhausted, and then they send another list. Okay. It's just like your Netflix queue. It is very much yeah, like, yeah. Idea. Oh, yeah. You can set up a list and then they'll automatically keep sending you things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and with the app and stuff now, it's even kind of like using Netflix, you know, using a live stream the streaming mm -hmm. service as well as getting some DVDs in the mail. So it's a very analogous kind of service for sure. The Nebraska Books and Digital is simply a listing of books that um, were born digital in our studios or that we've converted from the cassette collection. Yeah. Mostly. Some are brought in from other sources. There's no, it's not a built-in order form to this one. They would, they would need to give us the DB numbers um, through a phone call or an email, but it's not built-in way to do that. Yeah, my that list is growing. It's growing all the time. Yes, it is. Yeah, this this is a list of stuff that's happening at my desk actually. So uh, <laughs> it continues to grow. So uh, as quickly as we can, anyway. Yeah, obviously all the new books immediately are digital, and then other books. Um, yeah. Specifically, when we get requests, we try to move those into digital as quickly as possible, but just in general, too, we try to convert whatever we can as time allows. We do have a question, um, well, two questions, sort of. Uh, Pam Baumfalk, who's at our Hastings Public Library, wants to know about the recorder, the players themselves. Are libraries um, ever going to get replacement digital players for our local patrons like we have had for cassette recorders? And related to those, should we be sending the existing cassette machines back to you guys? ones they may still have. Yes, send the RC players, the cassette players back to us. Yes, let us know you want a couple of the digital players. What we're finding is the digital players have better longevity than the cassette ones did, mm -hmm. so we don't anticipate the same turnover. And to begin with, we weren't going to do this, but now we have enough digital players on hand, it's not going to be a service issue, so we can get maybe one of the basic machines, one of the advanced, into your hands. Uh, for for swap and also for local demos if you'd like, yeah. So yes, definitely. <laughs> um, obviously, yeah. The the digital players have less moving this parts that you know, need exactly. repair or anything than the cassette right, players yeah. did. Yeah. We're finding out what what tends to go wrong is probably predictable. Is that the batteries don't hold the charge as long as they used to when they were brand new. Uh, so mm -hmm. the machines that were running out for maybe two three years are having a, a charge cycle of maybe like twelve hours instead of twenty. Which is hilarious that we think of that as a problem. I know. Because <laughs> yeah, some players, that's that's awesome. Yeah, 12, 12 hours was like Moses parting the waters for a cassette player. So, you know, it's it, because, again, those moving parts, the motors really ate up battery power very rapidly. Yeah. 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 So. Pam says, thank you. You're welcome. That's the only question that's come in so far. Yeah. So, anybody has any other questions about it, please let us know. Is there anything else you guys want to show? At the bottom of this page would be a couple of uh, some catalogs highlighting our Nebraska Braille collection. To let you know, we do have a Braille browsing collection, mostly, well, it would be for children and young adults, and the books are organized um, in broad categories. The, the board books would be the earliest Braille readers, um, uh, preschool through maybe kindergarten grades one or two, and beyond that. Um, Grade 1 Braille means it's non-contracted Braille, it's letter for letter. Grade 2 Braille means it's contracted, which is how you, you learn Braille um, fairly early on, where the one cell might stand for several letters, or even for a whole word. It, it's how they condense Braille. Anyway, they're 
and uh, we also mounted the uh, tactile maps and raised illustrations from the Library of Congress. It's somewhat dated, but um, it, it can be useful and it's still there. Yeah, it's interesting that a lot, most of the um, most people, most people hear about and talk about the talking books section, the audio books and everything, but I do know downstairs there's that whole section in the front on our first floor here with um, all the braille books and the decorations for the kids and stuff, so it's always, you know, makes yeah. us look like a real public library down yeah, there with everything. Yeah, people thing. come around. So the there's a, yeah, there's a huge section down there, I'm like, nobody ever really talks, and, you know, as much about these. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, for adult braille, we, is it... Utah 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 braille. Utah. Utah. Yeah. Yeah, we do have some braille that Utah will send some patrons here. But that web braille thing, too, which was another function of BARD, mm -hmm. is really a fantastic way to go. There are these um, small, refreshable braille displays. Um, you can choose a variety of them in terms of specifications and how many cells are available on a device at the time, but that's a great way to read those, too. Much more compact, because Braille books tend to get rather large, so it's, yes. a, it's a great way to just have a little thing you can carry in your pocket and still read Braille. Cool. Okay, well, no new questions have come in. If you guys are... I think we covered the basics. I want to say thank you, Krista. Thank yeah. you, Michael. Oh, good. It took a lot of camera work, cabling, <laughs> yeah, yeah. moving things around. And Scott, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank yeah. you. You guys did great. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, I, we had gotten a demo of this here at the Library Commission in one of our staff meetings a month or two ago. <laughs> I can't yeah, remember I how long so. it was. Yeah, like and definitely wanted to get this out there for everyone to um, see what was coming and what is out there now available. Yeah. Um, the uh, iOS is out. and. Uh, Android coming next year. Coming, coming soon, coming hopefully. Soon. Oh, we yeah. I know there's, yeah, there seems to be a lot of, a lot of people do, as you were saying, someone said, um, or you were saying, they, I'm waiting for my Android to want to come, I just, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, it looks like nothing new has come in, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for attending this morning. I'm just going to pop over to our, let's see here. Encompass Live. So that will wrap up for today. I know we are. Um, the session was recorded, so it will be available um, sometime as soon as it's done processing. Um, everyone who attended, you'll be notified when the recording is available. So if you miss anything or you want to watch it again um, or share it with any colleagues who weren't able to be here today, um, we'll be sharing that information out on our website. All of our recordings, this is our Encompass Live webpage. All of our archive recordings end up down here on our archive and Encompass Live sessions. And as I said, this is where we've got all, almost five years worth of our sessions are all here with um, the recordings, links, presentations, anything that's available. So that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope you'll join us next week when it is the end of the month. So it is our monthly Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And he is doing a session on Excel at Re Rearranging Your Library. Um, Chris Ripple, who's from the um, in, from Kansas, the Central Kansas Library System, did this presentation at the uh, um, ARSL conference, Association of Rural and Small Libraries conference that was here in Omaha on using Excel spreadsheets to rearrange the setup of your library. So he's going to be on with us to um, show how he did that and share it. So sign up for that. And if you are a Facebook user, we are also on Facebook. Oh, look, the like button has changed. Um, <laughs> so if you do want to do that, like us there. We announce when new sessions are coming up. Um, I remind people when a new one's starting, when our recordings are available. Where's the recording one? There we go. So you'll keep up on what's going on with Encompass Live here on our Facebook page as well. So other than that, that will wrap it up, us up for today. Thank you very much, and we will see you next week on Encompass Live.